Welcome to part two of Doug Self's Pressed Floral Art at the Garden Talk Salon in Cashers, North Carolina. What I like to do, rather than put the flower directly on the newspaper, because sometimes the ink, if it gets too damp, the ink will run, that sort of thing. I just like to have, especially if I'm using a white flower or a very light colored flower, I use, uh, I want to put a layer to buffer that uh, with just, this is basically just uh, packing paper. Uh, again, had moved, it was something I had on hand, <laughs> and it works very well. I mean, it's basically newsprint. I will say that it's best not to use the kind that has somewhat of a uh, sheen on it, a coating, because that won't dr absorb the moisture as well. Um, so I, I put that down over the, the newspaper. Um, let me talk a little bit about placement. What's important, is, as you may know, is the way you lay it down and the way it's it's um, put on the paper and then you know sealed up and then pressed, that's what you're going to get back. Um, so it's 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 important to take a little bit of time to make sure you've got things turned the way you want to turn them. That the leaf, that if it's a fern, that it's you know all the fronds are all you know pointed out and not folded up on each other because. Once it's pressed, it's going to be obviously dried. You're not going to be able to rearrange it. Um, now, the other thing that is easy to do and remember, depending upon your material, and I had picked this morning over at the High Hampton, you know, of course, our ubiquitous mountain laurel rhododendron. When you have something like this that's clumpy, that's not a flat flower, that is, you know, made up of individual flowers, obviously. Uh, pull them apart, separate them, because you dry them all individually and then when they're dried and you're ready to compose your picture, you can reassemble it on the paper, almost just like working with a collage of cutout paper almost. Um, and, and it's, you might say, oh that sounds like cheating, but you know, it's not. I mean, you can make it look like it, it used to look. Um, it's not going to be exactly. Now. That's not to say you couldn't just press the whole thing, but I find that the end product is not going to be as pretty. Um, it, 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 and also, you, it may be more prone to mold and mildew when there are lots of layers of, of flour that are just kind of piled on each other. Will it even go flat when you're doing a big bunch like that? Can you get it completely flat? You can, but again, sometimes it will look a little gray where there's a lot of flowers. So, what I like to do and I've done a few of these, is I will take the individual, you know, separate flowers off. Um, and I like to do, you know, do them different ways because obviously they're not gonna all be sitting like directly right up, in, in, you know, in terms of if you're trying to reconstruct it on paper. You're gonna have some that may be a little creased over. So, you know, I'll take some and I'll put them face down on the paper. Some I will take and, you know, kind of gently fold over like so. That one's, things about these are very sticky if you've ever touched one. And we'll, you know, do it like that. <coughs> I try to keep um, light colors together if I can, uh, that, although that's not entirely necessary. Um, it's important to give them some space on the paper, not put them all too close to each other, to give them a little time, room to kind of, you know, the moisture to, to bleed out and not onto each other. Um, I just pulled some things when we got here. I mean, really, you're limited only by your imagination in terms of what you want to try. Um, this, you know, little wildflower. I mean, I, this kind of thing, because it's so thin and small, I mean, the whole thing could just lay down you know, like so, um, and you know, just kind of arrange it a little bit with your fingers. You can also use tweezers or a good thing to kind of help you, you know, kind of push things the way you want to. Um, the other thing, and I wish I had it to demonstrate, are roses, rosebuds. Um, we have done several special orders of uh, flowers from weddings. Um, which this is an example of right here um, with uh, a wedding invitation. But oftentimes, obviously, in a, in a bride's bouquet, there'll be you know very tight roses. Um, 
We've also done some um, from funerals uh, where family members have wanted to, you know, get flowers from the funeral to remember, you know, their loved one by doing a press flower picture. Uh, those we've actually done a, a number of those, which I think is a, is a great idea, and we'll put the, the person's name and birth and, and death dates under. But obviously, a big fat rosebud like you, like an American Beauty, that's so you know bulbous. Uh, it's not going to just flatten down too well, and it's going to lose that pretty shape. And what we always do with those is sort of very carefully, and again, I don't really have an example here, but um, hold it sort of firmly in your hand, and we cut, cut it right into, um, and then we put it, the cut side down on the paper. Um, we cut it right off as close as we can at the stem to the actual, you know, the bud, the bud part. Um, that's great because now you've got two, or you just had one, but it also will, it's just going to press better and the color is going to last a lot better and it's going to hold its shape. Um, so, and you can do that trick with anything that's sort of fat like that. Um, I haven't tried a peony. I think a smaller peony might work like that. Um, tulips. Um, I've tried that with tulips. What I found are better with tulips is actually to pull them completely apart and do each petal, and then it, you know I put it back together, and that includes the stamens. Um, this is a the Turk's cap lily, which you know obviously you see around. Um, I think I might would try that with this because the the stamens here. The pollen will obviously come off and sometimes that will discolor the rest of it. So it's always good sometimes if you have something like that on the flower to, you know, pull that out separately and then, you know, put that back together later. Um, because it will, it will often, you know, run onto the other things. Um, leaves, don't forget to do the leaves that come with your flowers. Um, you know, I, again, I would pull these off because they're obviously a lot larger and do those separately. I would do some this way and some that way, although with the leaves it doesn't really matter because you can still use either side of them. Um, also make sure you, you're not bringing any insects into the process. Uh, I always, you know, will shake them good and uh, I know sometimes we have to really watch that with hydrangea because of the ants love the hydrangea. And we've had uh, ants all over our kitchen more than a couple of times. Um, because anything that gets into the pro pressing, it, you know, you might see it later and it's eating up things so that's obviously not a good thing and also try to find obviously the prettiest leaves of what you're selecting you know these these I picked were a little, little cracked on that end and that doesn't make for a great picture although I will say sometimes I kind of like to have a leaf that's got a, a hole in it you know that something's eating it kind of adds a little character I think to the picture I mean the natural world is not always perfect um, and I think sometimes it's kind of fun to capture that in the pictures. So one other thing I just want to uh, mention too, flowers like a sunflower like this um, that have a raised center uh, that's, that's going to be thicker than the petals are. Um, there's one trick that you can do um, is when you lay it down um, like this, you can cut some cardboard that's thicker, cut out the, um, try to get it about, if you can, uh, enough layers that are the thickness of the center, the, where the, um, uh, the seeds are, and stack it on top of it so that it, you can then, when it goes into the press, you know, it'll be even. So you've got the cardboard that is flattening the petals, which are lower, and then that sort of fills the space uh, inside the the magazine and, and the press, and it's not you don't have air between the top of the the little pod and the leaves because sometimes that will cause the leaves to curl up because nothing they're not really getting flattened. So if you if you layer cardboard with a little cutout, a circle cutout, that will kind of build up there and will allow you to have sort of a more perfect sunflower when the process is done. So the little pod part would be peeking through the cardboard? Exactly. Okay. But then the cardboard would sort of come up around it so that it ends up being level. 
Um, leaves are great to do. I like even to do in the spring when the leaves first come out and while they're still very, you know, they, they don't have as much um, uh, you know, bug bites and things like that on them or, you know, where they've got maybe a little singe, but they're very, very fresh and, and very, you know, tender. Uh, they look great. I mean, the green, it, it makes for beautiful, uh, you know, pictures. Uh, you can also do the, uh, obviously, autumn leaves. Um, you don't want to wait too late uh, because if they get too dry and brittle, they're not they're not going to do well, and the color may may turn more brown as opposed to preserving the, the autumn color that you're looking for. Uh, ferns, another great one um, to do. Again, I think it's just very important, you know, when you lay it down, just to to really um, make sure that each frond is as best you can, you know, laid out. So once you get everything laid out on the paper the way you want it. Um, Fold your, you know, your white paper on top of that. Fold your newspaper on top of that. And then what I do is just with these magazines or these uh, these big sort of newsprint things like this. And you and you can use any kind of magazine really. Although I find that the less glossy it is, obviously the better. Um, and I just tuck them in. And this is kind of how I do it when I'm collecting things on a trip too. Because I can get my hands on, on you know, those kind of tourist magazines pretty easily, and newspapers, and you know, it's just something I do in the room. And then <laughs> I have a whole stack of them that you know I take back with me in a bag. And when they go through the X-ray machine, I just wonder if I'm going to get pulled over, <laughs> you know, for for whatever. But so far, nobody's blinked about it. So, so you can, uh, in this case, uh, you can fill one of these with you know several. Then what I would call you know, leaves or folios or pressings in the same magazine. Just, you know, skip some pages so that again you have some 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 more wicking in between them. Fold it over. So then you've got, say, one of these with all your little uh, leaves or pressings in them. Stay tuned for part two of three of Doug Self at the Garden Talk Salon in Cashers, North Carolina.